In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the mechanical equatorial sundial. What sets this dial apart from its peers is its replacement of a polar gnomon with a geared, separated hour and minute rotating arm around the uh, equatorial ring. Let's begin our examination with the orientation of the dial before its use. The first step in this process is to ensure that the dial rests upon a level surface. This can be done with the plumb bob at the front of the dial. Although it's currently missing, there would have been a string with the weight at the bottom. When the weight aligns with this upward spike, it can be known that the dial is resting level on the local horizon. Turning to the back of the dial, we see a magnetic compass. This can be used to orient the dial true north. To account for magnetic declination, the compass can be adjusted via this small knob on the bottom of its box. Lastly, we have the latitude scale. The equatorial plate is simply inclined to the degree of use and locked in place with this small lever pin. Now we come to the actual operation of the dial itself, which is where this dial is truly unique. The entirety of its hour indicating arm is one single piece, from the hour indication itself all the way up through the minute uh, clock to the gnomon, which takes the form of a small uh, polar dial. In most versions of this dial, the solar alignment mechanism is an allidade rather than this polar dial. In these cases, the allidade with its two setting vanes sits directly on top of the indicator arm, with one setting vane closest to the sun and the other toward the other end of the arm. When the shadow of the first vane directly overlaps the second vane, it can be known that the entire arm is pointing directly at the sun. At this point, just as the, just as the case with this polar dial, the, the hour indicator arm can be referenced along the hour scale, and the minute can be referenced on its clock. To use this dial, the entirety of this arm is rotated around the hour scale until the string of the polar dial coincides with the line on its plate. The string originally would have spanned the gap between these two brackets, although it is currently missing. As this arm rotates around the dial plane, the minute hand also rotates around its face. It's able to do this with the uh, through the small gear connecting the hand to the gear around the uh, the edge of the equatorial ring and in fact this is the only reason there are gears at all in this dial is simply for the movement of this minute hand so as the dial as the arm rotates around the equatorial dial the minute hand rotates as well sweeping out a full rotation each time the hour advances So when the polar dial is oriented so that its shadow, the shadow of the cord overlaps the line on its plate, the hour can be referenced with at the end of the hour indicator. The minute can then be referenced um, along the edge of the minute clock as the, the minute hand will point to the current uh, position in the, the hour's track. Now, this will conclude the demonstration, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.